one that is easy to miss on the list of major urban areas. But for the last 18 days or so, Isiolo County has gripped the imagination of the country with police drawing chilling connections between the county number 11 and the deadly attack on 14 Riverside Drive on the 15th of January. That's right. Tonight, Citizen Television's special projects desk has in intriguing details of the tens of families that are still in regular direct contacts with their sons who are fighting in the ranks of Al-Shabaab, one of the world's most foremost terror groups. Oh, did someone ignore the red flags that were flying all over Isiolo months before the Riverside attack? Have intelligence agencies missed important clues in the recruitment and sustenance of these operatives who are born and radicalized right inside Kenya? That's right. Tonight, we connect the dots in our in-depth investigation report, the Isiolo Link, by Special Projects Editor Asham Wilu. Mastermind of the attack, Ali Salim Gishunge. Now, the Director of Public Prosecutions, Nurdin Haji, also appointed a team of prosecutors to provide technical assistance to detectives. Nine more people were arrested in connection with the attack in Isiolo, Ushirika Estate in Nairobi, Kaimosi, Bondeni in Mombasa, and Nairobi CBD. And the Anti Terror Police Unit expanded its search to Garsen in Tana River County and Witu in Lamu County. So at the same time, members of the public were allowed to collect their items and vehicles from the 14 Riverside complex after the attack. Suspects, police linked to financing the deadly 14 Riverside attack, were arraigned in court. The anti-terrorism police unit told the court that a suspect linked to the terror attack received 9 million shillings from South Africa through M-Pesa over a three-month period and sent the cash to Somalia. The suspect, Hassan Noor, had 52 M-Pesa agent accounts, and 47 of them were registered between October and December last year. Well, an insurance agent working for Direct Line Company appeared in a Nairobi court, accused of procuring insurance for two vehicles used by the attackers. Now, the court allowed police to hold the suspect, Zipora Wamboy Karanja, for 15 days to allow investigators to complete the probe. Police were allowed to detain a National Transport and Safety Authority official for 30 days for allegedly aiding the attackers. Now, the following day, six more NTSA officials were presented before a Nairobi court over accusations of aiding the terrorists. Police believe that they aided the attackers by issuing fake number plates. And two days ago, a Nyeri court released three suspects after police found no evidence linking them to the attack. Now, the January attack at Riverside Drive has reignited debate on youth radicalization across the country. That's right. In towns like Isiolo, security agents are grappling with a high number of young men and women who have been lured into Somalia. Well, tonight, our special projects editor, Asha Mwilu, takes us in depth into the calm town with links to Al Shabaab operatives. Ali Salim Gishungi, alias Farouk, managed to remain low-key as an active Al-Shabaab insurgent in Kenya. His name only became public when he and half a dozen others launched an attack at Dusit Hotel in Nairobi. Police believe he was a key mastermind of the Riverside attack. Investigators moved with speed to flush out any active terror cells, especially those linked to the Dusit attackers. <laughs> Naturally, Gishunge's bath town, Isiolo, would quickly find itself under the microscope. We are traveling to Isiolo town in the first days following the January attack to investigate suspicions that Al-Shabaab operatives are still actively recruiting in this town. We arrive in Isiolo just as police have circulated these photographs of suspects claimed to be terrorists. The story has become even more complex because residents here tell us that some of the men in the photographs have already surrendered to the police. At the Isiolo police headquarters, three families are camping here demanding answers. Police are unwilling to speak to us, so we decide to follow the suspects to their homes. 
When an area called Tuluroba, which is around five minutes from Isiolo town, we're trying to piece together the information that police officers have given the media so far. And what we've learned is that the six men who are said to be armed and dangerous actually come from the same area, which is this place. <laughs> We find Abdi Ali Kachora at his mother's house. He claims he was arrested while en route to Somalia for business. He currently has an active case in court. I was here for one month and I was here for one month, but every one month I was here for one month. So I was here for a mission in February 25th. I was here for one month. I was here for one month. A few meters away, Boru Abdi Bidu shares a similar narrative. I took up my travel na best yango flani, kote nda business issue tu. But dabo kumbe kuli kona wase wali kona dogo. With the same car tuli kona, so wali kona trakiwa. Ndo wakasema tushuke so misi kwa naidi. Kabidi wa tushuke sisi. So hile kunishika mimi ndo yule msa yalikuwa hapa hivyo. Kabidi wa mshikia tu. So hika wakasema tu connection na ya. Kapeleka kuotini. Kuotini waka wafanya kila kitu. Waka proof. Hawa kuna wengine waka wana kesi. Yei haku wana kesi. Although Ramadan Wario Bonaya is unwilling to speak on camera, we're able to confirm that he too was arrested on suspicion of joining Al-Shabaab and has been attending his court sessions. 2017, wale vijana walikuwa mishikwa kule semu za moyale wakijaribu kufuka, wakaletwa na wakapele kwa kotini. Na kuna reporting system ya mwa hiko kwa kupele kuenda kwa ofisi ya DCI na antitera na kesi zile likuwa zikiongozo na ofisi ya antitera na ofisi ya antitera wale watu wanawajua. While the alerts on these three men may have been a case of a mix-up by intelligence teams on the ground and those in Nairobi, the fact that many young men from Isiolo appear to be making trips into Somalia is undeniable. Dido Mohamed Fugicha, whose photograph was among the six, lived in this neighborhood. His father remembers the day his son went to Somalia to join Al Shabab. Sikumoja nikapata simu, tota mepiga simu. Bila kuchukua simu nikakuja kwa tera. Nikamwambia simu hii amepigwa na mtu fulani lakini nikauliza hii code ni ya wapi? Na Somalia. Ikawa nimeeleza akaniambia chukue mtoto usienda chukue hiyo simu mueleze ya kwamba kitu gani mmefanya atoke hapa na usiongee na kwa ukali muongee na upole tufanye namna taru atarudi basi mimi ni kesho yake akapiga simu tena nikamueleza kwa nini ametoka kitu gani unafanya unatoroka hapa kwa nini umeenda somali unafanya nini huko sasa sasa kaniambia hana shida yote na hakuna umalifu anafanya yeye anasoma Qur'an na upande wa somali didu is among the dozens of men and women radicalized from isiolo Local NGOs believe that close to 300 Isiolo youths have joined terror groups in Somalia and abroad. <laughs> Most residents here believe that Al-Shabaab uses fellow youth to radicalize other young men and women. Football pitches became popular spots for radicalization. Suspected recruiter going by the alias Van Pasi is said to have been an ardent football player here before joining Al-Shabaab. Van Pasi is a fan of the football player. Ni mtu ambaye alikuwa na eh, sasa zingine anasaidia vijana kwa ball financially ni kile kitu akiwa na doa na wapea watoto wanajuana wote na watoto mmoja kwanza ni hapa na yote they are very close ni kama mita hamsini kutoka kwangu nyumbani kwa hivyo lazima wajua lazima wanajuana na wanakaa pamoja chochote ambayo wanafanya kila mtu anajua wanajuana kwa hii harika yao sisi hatuwezi kujua Ninafahamu kama kuna vijana wengi ambao wako nje uh, siwezi kusema ni Somalia ama ni nchi gani kwa sababu wametoka wengine hawana hatuna ithibati lakini tunajua kama walipotea makwao na hawajulikani walipo na inashukiwa kwamba walienda kujiunga na hivi vikundi vya vya, vya haramu Insiders reveal that sons of former top county officials were among those radicalized and intercepted at the border we reach out to former county speaker Mohamed Tubi to find out if rumors of his son's interception are true. Fortunate enough, my son was about to learn, but he couldn't go out of the country and he has to call me. 
when he was that, it's as if they hypnotized. He called me and then I have to call him back and we are, we are safe with him. And they know it very well. So when I, when I try to inquire, who are these guys? It's just friends. Somebody just tries to call them from outside. Somebody who knows their numbers. Solo, whose real identity we've concealed for his safety, reveals to us how he managed to travel into Somalia. He is among the recent returnees who came back into the community. mosque. <laughs> Ndoo vijana upatanaga hapo wanaongeza story. Ambaye recruitment ni ile mdi watu wanachukuliwa hapo. Kwa vijana wanatoka wanapitia Ethiopia, Ethiopia wanatoka wanaenda Sudan, wakitoka Sudan wanaenda Libya hivyo. Wengine wanapitia na hiyo njia wakienda ISIS. So Somalia life yake iko mzuri, si poa sana huko watu wanauawa, kuliwa watu wanauliwa pure pure. Hakuna maisha, hakuna kazi. Eh, ukiwa hapo lakini utaambiwa kuna kazi huko sijui pesa watu wanalipwa na dola nini unaona kuchochana ile lakini ukifika pale utajua reality we say they are being recruited we have never seen intelligence of this country of this country of ours kushika mtu mmoja akatuambia this is a recruiter menelewa this is the route wamepitia because yule mtoto kutoka isiolo mtoto amemaliza tu form 4 all of a sudden ati amepanda gari ati amepanda uh, gari there has to be transportation there has to be money involved there has to be facilitation who is facilitating this but the problem we have the problem with our parents most of our parents they don't want to speak they don't want to speak true they lie because these children when they join they don't tell the government or the anti terror police unit in this part of the world if anybody reports even normal banditry around in these areas, Kita Kwanza police will ask you, Uli Juaje, you know? Uli Juaje, Utatawa Nini, you know, Utatu Eleza. You become a criminal even before you try to inform the president, the government. Kama mtoto wako unashuku, anafanya vitendobana o reporti. Then wewe itakuwa ni mshirika wake. Na ni bora tu kuripoti kwamba mimi na shuku mtoto wangu ana kitendo kibaya then vyombo vinavyohusika vya dola viweze kumfuatilia apate kujua ukweli wa yale maneno lakini ukificha baadaye pia unajipata katika hatari one thing that we've noticed, a thread that is consistent here, is that all these families have been co collaborating and cooperating with the police. Those whose sons are said to be suspects have been going for court cases, and those like Dido's family, who are said to be in Somalia, have been telling police every piece of information and giving, sharing the police every piece of information that they've been receiving from their son. The big question now is, if indeed anti-terror police officers in Isiolo town have all this intelligence and might have had intelligence even about Ali Salim Gichunge, have they acted on it? And if intelligence officers can track Al-Shabaab recruits and their families, could they intercept attacks like the one on Riverside Drive before they happen? Ashamwilu, on special assignment in Isiolo town.